this good news to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. You may be seated. How many of you are liking the cool weather? All right. Y'all have got your winter. All right. There you go. No, it, it, it's been refreshing. It really has been, and it's been great, though. Got out and worked in the yard a little bit yesterday, and it was, I, I will admit, it's a little bit better than working in 110 degrees. So, uh, uh, but we had, we had a good time, a little better there. No, it's, uh, I, I thank God. Again, he reminds me he's in charge, and uh, the rain we got the other day was just fantastic. Uh, I, again, I just think how God takes care of us, and he lets us know that he, lo- that he loves us. And folks, as we continue on in this series in the Great Commission, our job is to let others know that God loves them. Because there are people who have never heard that, that God loves them. And, and folks, I'm not talking about in foreign countries. I'm talking right here in Troy, America, USA, right? There are people that's not heard that. And you go, well, that's hard to believe. Folks, we need to get out of our shells and start looking at some reality. Life has changed. We live in a post-Christian culture. We need to be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ because I firmly believe that that glorious day of Jesus coming again is soon. Is soon. And We need to get as many people going with us as we can. And so we're going to, again, continue looking at this series in in the Great Commission. And so we're going to be looking at the, the subject of baptizing. So if you'll turn to Matthew 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. Verse 19 of Matthew 28. Again, I'll remind, in case folks came in late, uh, sometimes say, well, we're still not doing the offering plate, so we don't have a time yet. So Robert's at the back in the foyer to, with an uh, offering plate to take your offerings uh, that you would like to give. Those of you listening to the live stream, or even, in fact, folks here in, in the auditorium, uh, we also do online giving. So I just wanted to make sure and mention that uh, as we helps us do the ministry of Christ in our area. All right, Matthew 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. And that next word is baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It, It was a big rainstorm in West Texas. Good size hole of water was made, and when you get rain in West Texas, you know, it's an unusual thing. And so this big hole of water was in the backyard of, of these two little boys' house. And they were having so much fun in that hole of water. They were running in it, sliding in it, splashing each other on that. And Mama was looking out the kitchen window and then was just smiling as she saw her, her kids playing in that water. I mean, they are just having so much fun. And all of a sudden, she, as she's looking out the window, she saw them stop. And the biggest boy, oh, he's about six or so, uh, six, uh, six years old. Uh, his younger brother's about four. Uh, they stopped a little bit, and, and, and the older brother took that little one, just threw him down in the water and held him down there for a while and took him back up, and everybody was just, and, and Mama was just aghast at it. What is going on? And they were laughing and, 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 and just uh, uh, carrying on, and next thing she said, okay, I don't know what happened. She saw him do it again. She runs out, and she goes, what in the world are you doing why are you doing this? And, the, and the, big, uh, the older brother said, Well, Mama, I'm just doing what the preacher did this last Sunday. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, and in the hole you goes. <laughs> so, we're going to be dealing with baptism as we continue in our series here uh, in the Great Commission. As, as Chris uh, said a couple of weeks ago, The imperative of this verse is make disciples. That is what we are to be doing. 
And last week we looked at uh, a, a participle that modifies it and tells us how we are to do it. How are we to make disciples? And that is going. To go, remember we looked at it, it really means as you are going. Really, go as you are going. It's a command to go, but it's also as you are going, make disciples. And we talked about looking for those open doors that God made for us to share the gospel. Again, we don't have to kick down every door. Look for the open doors. God has open doors as you are going with people that need to hear the gospel. Again, maybe you're planting a seed. Maybe you're watering a seed. Maybe you're weeding. Uh, but every so often, you're going to get to do a little bit of harvesting as you go. And so, uh, uh, now we come to the word baptizing. Another participle that modifies make disciples. Now, the Greek word that is used here is the word baptizo. And, and I don't know, honestly, I've looked at, I don't know how many translations that are out there of Scripture, and I haven't found one that gives us a literal translation of that word. The word baptism is just a transliteration of the Greek word into English. The word baptizo in the original language literally means to immerse or to submerge. It means to put under water, to immerse. That is literally what the word means. You, it's, and people say, well, it could mean something else. No. You go, to, uh, you go to Mexico and you see this sign that says alto. That sign literally means stop. I don't care if you try to make it say something else. That cop will tell you, no, this sign literally means stop. Baptizo, baptism, literally means to immerse, to put under water. Also, in the Greek uh, that we have translated, it says, uh, Go therefore, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That word in, that's translated as in, actually is better translated as into. Into. So, we could translate this verse to correctly mean go and as you are going make disciples of all nations immersing them in water into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, notice baptism comes after the making of disciples. This is important, folks. Baptism comes after making disciples. And so, as we look at this uh, subject today, I want us to understand why baptizing is so important in obeying the commands of Jesus. The first thing that we see about baptism or, or can know about baptism is this. It is a sign of repentance. Baptism is a sign. It's a sign of repentance. In, in Mark 1.15, we see this, Jesus, Jesus preaching this, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Now, Jesus is saying this. This is of our Savior. To make disciples, one first must bring the person to a knowledge that they are a sinner and that they need to repent, that they need to turn from their sins. The word repent literally means to turn around, to do a 180. I heard somebody say one time a 360. No, a 360, you're just still going the same way you're going. You do a 180, you're going the other way, you're repenting. You don't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And so baptism is an outward sign of an inward action, that of the repenting of sin. And it shows that the desire of that person's heart is to turn from and to not live in a sinful lifestyle any longer. Folks, this is why the order of New Testament baptism is always, always, always baptism after repentance. Never before. Okay? You'll never find anywhere in the New Testament where someone was baptized before repentance 
or before they came to the knowledge that they needed to repent. It isn't there. Because baptism is a sign of repentance. This also means that you can't find in the New Testament the idea of infant baptism. It's not there. Why? Because a baby doesn't realize that he or she is a sinner and needs to repent of sin. So infant baptism for the forgiveness of sin is not biblical, folks. It's not New Testament. But an infant or a child being under God's grace until that time that they become accountable for their sins is biblical. It is biblical. And, and a child becomes accountable for their sins when they reach that age, when they realize that they are a sinner and they need salvation. And folks, that's a different age for different children. For me, it was about nine years of age when I realized that. Actually, I started at eight realizing that. And the only thing that kept me from going forward is I didn't like standing in front of a whole lot of people like y'all, you know? But at the age of nine, I finally gave in and I went forward because I had reached that age of accountability. And if I had not accepted Christ and something would have happened to me, and once I knew that I was accountable for my sins, then my destiny would have been different than before I knew. Again, you'd never find in the New Testament anyone being baptized before they repent of their sins. Now, there are... There are some denominations that do baptize infants, but as a commitment, they're dedicating that baby to the Lord. That's another thing. I want to make sure and throw that in because you say, well, wait a minute, we did this, but we were just committing. That's a whole different thing. That's a whole different ball of wax. It's, it's a showing of a committing of that child to the Lord. It's not for the sin of that child or the original sin. Baptism is a sign of repentance. And it's a sign of the desire to turn from a sinful lifestyle and to live a godly lifestyle. One cannot be a disciple of Jesus until that person repents of their sins that Jesus died for. You can't be a disciple until you repent. So baptism is a sign of repentance. Baptism is also a sign of belief. A sign of belief. Remember what Jesus said there in Mark 1.15? Repent and, what's that next word? Believe. Believe in the good news. Along with repentance comes, with, comes belief in the good news. And what's the good news? The good news is this. Jesus, the baby born of a virgin in Bethlehem, is the Son of God. He did what we couldn't do. He lived a righteous life that pleased God. And yet, even though he lived a righteous life, even though there was no sin in him, he was still crucified on a cross under the curse of sin for us. He did that for us. He died in our place. But Jesus was raised from the grave... To those, for those who w and for those who would believe to offer new life. Jesus gives this new life to anyone, anyone who calls upon him in faith. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. Baptism is is a sign to all who witness it that we believe in Jesus and we've put our total faith and trust in Him for our salvation. Baptism proclaims to others that you believe that Jesus is who He says He is, the Son of God, and what Jesus says He can do, He will do. Save you from your sins. He will give you salvation from your sins. And folks, you cannot be a disciple of Jesus if you don't believe that. 
You cannot be, you cannot give your life if you do not believe that. The baptism is a sign of belief for all who see it that that person is believing in Jesus, believes who he is, believes in what he can do. Third, baptism is a sign of identity. Remember I said earlier that the phrase in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit actually meant uh, uh, into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? What that means, as you're looking at the original, it means that you are identifying with them. Notice I said them? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You're identifying with the Trinity. And what you are wanting them to do is you are wanting them to cover you with their presence. Kind of like baptism, you go, you get covered in, by water. You're saying in that fact that you're wanting them to cover you just like that water covers you. You're wanting to be covered by their presence. You're wanting them to have influence over you in all that you do. And when people see you, when they see you being baptized, you are telling them that or you're wanting them to see the Trinity in you. No longer do you want to be identified with the ways of the world, but now you want to be identified with the ways of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now notice where Jesus is in, the, in that formula. Where is He? He's in the middle, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now who gave us this great commission? Who said these words? Jesus, right? Okay, good. We'll try this audience participation. We'll go a little bit better. I know it's a time change, folks, but okay, we'll, get, we'll do our best. Remember, we got an extra hour of sleep. Maybe that's the problem. Y'all got too much sleep, okay? Jesus puts himself in the middle here. This is important, folks. Jesus is claiming by putting himself in the middle of this as equal to the Father and the Holy Spirit. And he can do that because Jesus is? There you go. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. He is claiming equality here. So if somebody says that Jesus never claimed to be God, they don't know this verse. This is as clear as you can get. Jesus is identifying as God. And the believer, upon his or her baptism, identifies not only with Jesus and his death and resurrection. Remember, buried with him in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life, right? He not only identifies with him in his death and resurrection, but also with the Trinity. With God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is showing now that that believers in baptism, it's showing that that that. that Believers' loyalties are now with the one who they identify with. That you are now, your loyalty is to Jesus as your Lord. One cannot be a disciple unless they desire to identify with Jesus and have given him their total loyalty. So baptism is, a, is, is an identification. You're, you're identifying now with the Trinity. You're identifying now with Jesus. Not only is it a sign of identity, well, into, I should read my notes sometimes, don't you think? It's now a sign of change. I, did, I, I, I told Chris this earlier. I said I was spent this morning. Things just didn't work out well. Just uh, some of the things in here in the sermon, I thought, i got to redo some of these things. And I'd already sent Thomas the PowerPoint, and I'm trying to get it within, and I didn't mark some changes here. So I apologize for anything like that. But baptism is also a change. It's a sign of a change. Therefore, we were buried with him uh, by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead uh, by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. I like the way the message paraphrase uh, uh, puts it. It says this, When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into a, a new country of grace, a new life, in a new land. I like that. 
I like that. That's just, that, that just so good. Baptism is a sign to those who see it. Is a sign that we desire to die to our old way of life. We want to die. We, dying to the old way of life. It's a sign that we have left the old country, that old country of sin that we used to live in. And as we said earlier, we no longer want to have anything to do with that old sinful life. Remember our repentance. We've turned from it. We don't want to do it anymore. But it, baptism also says that we now desire to walk in a new way of life because we have been changed. We're not the same. We've entered into a new country of grace, a new life in a new land. We are not the same person before we became a disciple of Christ. We're not the same person who lived for our way and not God's way. We're not the same person who had worldly desires and, and not godly desires. We're not the same person because we have been changed. The old has died. The new lives. It's a sign that we've changed also our citizenship from that of this world to that of heaven. Baptism is a sign to all who witness it of that change. The burial of the old sinful self and the resurrection of the new self. That new self that now desires to live for the glory of God. Folks, one cannot be a disciple of Christ unless they are desiring change from their sinful ways to desiring to walk in the will of God. You have to have that desire if you're going to be a disciple of Christ. And baptism is a sign of that change that you desire in your life and it's a sign of that change that God has brought into your life. I don't know how many people I have... I have met who have, who have come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who, man, they, they were this way before they got saved. And then they, they, they got saved, they prayed and they asked Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. And they couldn't change themselves in the miraculous way that they got changed, the way God, God changed them. They were so different. I've mentioned him uh, before, but uh, whenever looking at uh, change and the radical change, I, I, I think of uh, somebody by the name of Gene Culver, an ex-Hell's Angel, who got saved and radically changed. And instead of hating everybody, he learned to love everybody and started preaching revivals about the glorious goodness of God. I've seen people change so much. I've seen people where... I've. Man, I, I remember it's been years ago, many years ago, I would go into the juvenile facility. Lola, you can relate to some of this. I'd go in into juvenile facility uh, there in Bell County, and there was a young man that was sitting there that, uh, uh, man, he was going to spend the rest of his life in, in, in prison. He'd killed somebody. And I looked at his eyes, and his eyes were just dead. I mean, there was nothing there. And I guess if there was anything there, it would be more of a hatred of anything. And I started talking to him, and, and, and every week I'd go back, and then after a few weeks, you could just see him start listening. And then all of a sudden, he said, can I pray that prayer even with what I've done? I said, you bet you can, if you mean it. He says, I'm going to mean it. And he prayed that prayer asking Jesus Christ to come into his life. Folks, I don't know. I don't understand it because I'm not God. But all I know, he prayed, and when he lifted up, there was sparkles in his eyes. There was life in his eyes. Every week I went back for the next, I think it was two or three weeks, and then he got shipped out. Every time I'd come in, before when I'd come in, it'd be... The only reason he was there is because he wanted to get out of where he was. After that, when I came in, <gasps> Harlan, hey man, what's going on? It was a change. Steve, you've seen those changes. God changes. Baptism is a picture of that change, 
Letting people know, I've changed. I'm not what I used to be. I'm a new person. Baptism is also a sign of hope. A sign of hope. Going under the water was a burial of your old life. Coming up out of it was a, res was a resurrection. God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were stuck in your old sin dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven, the slate wiped clean, and the old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. Again, I like the way the message put that. Baptism is a sign of the believer's hope and forgiveness of sin. That they have, it's that they have the hope that God has wiped their sin slate clean because of the work of Christ on the cross. It's a sign of the believer's hope also in the resurrection. A resurrection of a, a new life. A, a, a new heaven, a new earth with God himself. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea no longer existed. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity and he will live with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Folks, it's a sign. It's a sign of the believer's hope of the resurrection of being with God. It's a sign of the believer's hope of having a room in the Father's house. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. Am. Folks, in short, baptism is a sign that the believer has put his hope, her hope, in Jesus for this life and for eternity. Eternal life. And this hope is not just a wishful hope. It's not the hope that uh, the publisher's clearinghouse will come to your door hope. It's a certain hope. It's a for sure hope. It's a take it to the bank hope. Baptism is a sign of that person's certain hope in Jesus, of the new life to come, of the place for them in heaven. And one cannot be a disciple without having the hope of the resurrection, the hope of a new life, the hope of eternal life in heaven. Now, I say that. There are some that, yes, there's some. Well, that means I have doubts sometimes, so that I must not be a disciple. No, I'm not saying that. Satan will give us doubts, but when we come to ask Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, we have to have that hope, folks. That hope of eternal life, of being with Him. And we pray that prayer, we have that hope. Baptism is a sign that we have that hope in Jesus. Now, None of these signs, in none of these signs of what baptism is, did we ever see where one salvation hinged upon them being baptized. Right? Nowhere. Because if our salvation hinged upon us being baptized, then that would be a works Works would be a part of the salvation process. But works isn't. Because we can't be good enough. So it's not works. Then how are we saved? For you're saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift. Not from works. So that no one can boast. Folks, if baptism was a part of what it took to be saved, to be a disciple, then Jesus would have said, making them a disciple by baptizing them. 
That's a whole lot different than what he said. He didn't say that because it's only faith in him that saves. Baptism is a sign of being a disciple. A sign of you being a disciple. It's never so you can be one. It's a sign that you are a follower of Jesus. It's a picture. So baptism should never be a part of the steps one has to take to be saved because it's not biblical. And as we've looked at the signs of baptism, you can also see why it's put after one has been made a disciple. After because it is the sign of being a disciple. It's a sign of being a follower of Christ. It's a sign that you have put your faith in Him, that you are changed, that you have turned from your sin. I mean, remember, to be a disciple, you, you have to have an understanding that you're a sinner in need of the sanctifying work of Jesus on the cross, and you accept it, and you give your whole life to Him, and you want to identify with Him. If one is baptized before becoming a disciple, then that baptism is actually, folks, a lie. Because none of the signs that we have looked at are in that person's life. They're not a disciple of Jesus. But not having to be baptized in order to be saved does not mean that baptism is not important. It's extremely important. It's important because it is, it's the first thing that we're supposed to do. Jesus commands it. And that's reason enough to do it. Jesus said, make disciples, baptize. And if one is not obedient to be baptized, then they have already started their walk with Christ in disobedience. So it's important because it is one of the first signs that the believer has given their life to Jesus and that that believer is trusting in Jesus for the forgiveness of their sin, their salvation. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's just the first sign of one being a Christian. It's one's truly profession of faith. Baptism is my speaker out here? Okay, that's what I thought. I am, I am dead in the water here. Thomas, give me some sound. Do the pulpit. We'll go there. All right. Baptism proclaims that the believer is a follower of Jesus to the world. That's what it proclaims. It is your profession. It's truly the profession of faith. And again, it's why baptism is only to come after one has become a believer. It shows as a sign of what's happened in that believer's life. Jesus has happened. I like to think of baptism as the icing on the cake of salvation, right? Cake is good. I like cake. I do. But the icing is a sign that something good and worthwhile is there. Ooh, I like icing because it shows it's there. It's going, what's under it's going to be good. But the icing is not the cake. It's a sign that there's a cake under it. And even though there's no salvation properties to it, baptism is a sign that something good and worthwhile has happened in the life of that person being baptized that there's something under it, if you will. And to all who witness it, the Lord can, can use it to, to cause them to desire a salvation, like the one who's being baptized. I don't know how many people I've had to, after a baptismal service uh, that I've talked to and said, well, why did you accept Christ? Man, what I saw up there, what that person did, I accepted Jesus. It's a sign to those who witness it. So if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, man, you need to do so. Because all those things that we've talked about, uh, what baptism is a sign of, Jesus wants in your life. 
If you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, man, would you just pray a prayer? Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm asking you to come into my life. I'm asking you to be my boss. Today, I want to follow you. Today, I'm trusting in you for my eternity. Today, I am yours and forever. If you'll pray that prayer, there's no magic in those words. There isn't. But it's whether or not you really mean it. If you pray that prayer, then at the invitation time, we will invite you to just come forward down the aisle. Take me by the hand and say, Preacher, I, I prayed that prayer. And then we'll talk about baptism. Because baptism is important. But if you're here today and you have accepted Jesus, and you've never been baptized, I want to ask you to consider doing so. If you're physically able, I do understand that sometimes people are not physically able to be baptized and that's okay but if you are able then you need to be baptized because I can guarantee you it's in the will of God for you to do so because it's part of his great commission so maybe as we've talked about it and as we've gone through baptism you can see baptism is actually more than in the hole you goes it's the sign of being a disciple of Jesus. Let me ask you to bow your heads in prayer. During this invitation time, this is not my invitation to you. This is not the church's invitation to you. This is God's invitation to you. For you to do what he has put upon your heart to do. You may be here today and as a Christian, man, you know... Man, I've accepted Jesus. I've been baptized. I've told folks through my baptism there's a change in my life. But man, I've gone back to living some ways I shouldn't live. Maybe you might need to come up to this altar and recommit your life to Jesus. Maybe you want me to pray with you. I'd be happy to do that. You may be here today and as I said, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, we'd invite you to pray and to know Jesus. If you're watching us on live stream, man, pray that prayer and and if you pray it, email us and let us know so that we can get information to you of what to do next. But maybe you're just here today. You've accepted Jesus, but you've never followed in baptism. And you've often wondered, man, there seems like there's something missing. Yeah, the icing. The icing. Maybe you need to come forward and say, Preacher, I want to be baptized. And we'll talk about a time and we'll get it going. Today, what is the Holy Spirit prompting you to do? Please do it for the glory of God. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And Father, I pray for the hearts of those who are listening, that, Lord, you would speak to them. Father, as we've looked at this great commission, we've seen the importance of going and that we cannot make disciples unless we go. And our job is to make disciples. But afterwards, we're to make sure that they follow up in proclaiming that you are their Savior, you are their Lord, that they are immersing themselves in you. And Lord, that's what baptism's all about. There's something about baptism, Father. I remember being baptized as a child. There was just something about it that it was a new start. The old me was buried. There's something about baptism. And it's the fact that we're obeying your command that brings joy to lives. So, Father, again, I pray your spirit would find a freedom of movement to speak to touch and may in what he asks us to do may our answer be yes for it's in Christ's name I pray amen if you'll stand for our hymn of invitation you come with the Lord's laid decision on your heart where you go I'll go where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I 
Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for listening to us on live stream. Uh, remember tonight, 6 p.m., in here, first evening service in a while. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we're just going to have a good time worshiping the Lord. God is good all the time. All the time. You are dismissed. I'm putting it on.